sisters all over this great summer all tabernacle i want you to stand to your feet and welcome our guest tonight oh my god something's about to be loosed in the house would you please welcome prophet antonio burrow Well, come on, give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Come on. Come on, World Harvest Church, where y'all at tonight? Is there anybody here that still believe God works miracles? Grab somebody, shake them, and tell them you're next in line for your thing from your God. Come on, clap your hands and shout in here. Demons are shaking. Hell is in an uproar because you get ready to get something that hell said you wouldn't get this year, but it's in the room. Put your hand in your neighbor's hand, look at him like this. Look at him like this. And just say, hey! Woo! Come on, clap your hands and give him praise. Something about the Holy Ghost I cannot explain. But I know I got him. And he keeps nudging me, telling me to tell you, tell him it's already all right. Well, tell somebody it's already all right. Back in the old church, we used to sing a song, I got a feeling that everything gonna be all right. I come to tell you it's already all right. Can I go ahead and push that with another prophetic unction? I need to go ahead and tell you that for the rest of the year, you're not going to have to look for it. It's coming looking for you. Grab somebody by the hand and say, hey! You think you want it, but it wants you more than you want it. It knows it belongs to you. It knows you're supposed to live in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It knows you're supposed to drive it. My God. It knows you're supposed to own it. It knows you're supposed to spend it. It knows you're supposed to bank it. Well, open your mouth and grab your neighbor real quick and say, hey. Oh, I feel it in here tonight. I said, I feel it in here tonight. Oh, revival ain't over, baby. We just getting cranked up. I said, revival isn't over. We're just getting started. We shouted and we praised God for what we have believed him to do. We've shouted and praised God by faith. Trusting that he was going to bring something to pass. Salvation for your family, healing for your body, deliverance for your loved ones. Deliverance for you, prosperity. The supernatural, the miraculous. We shouted on credit. Yeah. 
But God just told me to tell you tonight, you get ready to shout with evidence. If you can shout like that and didn't have it yet, I wonder how you're going to shout when you get it. Touch him and tell him, give me some room, give me some room. Grab your other neighbor and say, hey. My God, I feel it here. But I got to give you some word because I have an assignment tonight. We're honoring, we're honoring, we're honoring the presence of the Lord that's in this room. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Oh my God. Hey, my Shando. Yeah. Hmm. My God. Touch somebody and tell him he's in the room. He's in the room. He's in the room. Hey, ho Shaba. I feel somebody being healed right over here. He's in the room. Sunday morning I was in Chillicothe. You heard the young man scream. That's the pastor of the great Zion Baptist Church. Pastor Troy Gray, good to see you back there, Pastor. I don't know too many men of God greater than Troy Gray. Come on, give God praise for him. I mean that, Pastor. I was with Pastor Troy Gray, and I was receiving the offering. And while receiving the offering, the Lord gave me a word of knowledge that he was healing a child. Can you imagine how them Baptist folk were looking at me when I was receiving the offering and I just out of nowhere said, God's healing a child. <laughs> Good God Almighty. We got a text message. Pastor Trey, or, or Gray, do you have that text message with you? Stay on your feet just one moment. I feel a release in here. Something's getting ready to shift. He forwarded me the text message, and the young lady who had a child who something happened to the child, and the child was in serious medical trouble. Pastor Gray, you got it? Would you just read that? They're going to bring you a I just want you to read what you forwarded me. Just read what you forwarded me. Hey, Pastor, I have a praise report. Four weeks ago, my son suffered a major concussion due to playing football. Every week we've been going to the doctor for checkup. Last week he began to decline even worse, but God. Yesterday, yesterday when the prophet said, someone's child is being healed, I knew he was talking to me. We went to the doctors today and my baby is healed. His numbers. His numbers were like he never received a concussion. My God is better than great. Grab somebody by the hand. Grab him by the hand. Grab him by the hand and say, hey! God spoke to me. He said, decree it tonight that when I do it this time, it's going to look like they've never been through anything. Ah, oh, grab somebody and tell them when you come out this time, there's not going to be evidence that you ever went through anything. If you believe that shot, give God praise. <laughs> we give honor to God tonight. Not only for his presence being here, but we thank God for the man of God that have left his anointing that resides in this place tonight, anything that I do, anything that I say would be up under the umbrella of the apostolic anointing of Pastor Rod Parsley. Let's give God praise for our general tonight. 
Y'all got to do better than that. Come on, I said, let's give God praise. This whole thing hangs in the balance tonight from the anointing of the apostle and the prophet. I feel something very strong about to break. Tell somebody there's a breaking in my favor. Mm. Ah, uh, yes. Not only do I honor Pastor Parsley, but I honor the woman of God, Miss Joni. Who the entire body of Christ just loves. Amen. We watched her on Sunday, and I tell you what, I fell in love with her all over again. Amen. She helps my faith. Amen. Thank God for Pastor Joni tonight. We do want to thank God for all of the officers and great uh, members, the executive, the administrative staff. We thank God for all of you. Amen. To these seasoned mothers and men of God, we thank God for every one of you. To every youth in this house, Valor Christian College, Harvest Prep, we thank God for you on tonight. To my wife and all of my children that are watching tonight from everywhere, amen. My son uh, would be with me tonight. Of course, he's in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee tonight preparing the way we go tomorrow morning to meet him at the Ruach Conference with Pastor Kevin Wallace, and we're excited about that. I was supposed to be there tonight, but when your daddy calls, you better go see what your daddy wants. Amen. And so I'm excited about being here tonight. Honey, I love you. I know you're watching. I love you so much. Elkhart is watching tonight. Clap your hand for Elkhart. Elkhart, y'all better pay attention because something's about to happen for you. Strong. Every partner watching around the world, tonight is your night. I want you to hear me. Take your seat real quick. I do want to thank God tonight. A friend of mine is here who flew in all the way from... Douglas, Georgia, had to drive three hours to the airport in Atlanta, and uh, I want you to help me appreciate and celebrate uh, Pastor Frank Bussey is here tonight. Amen. Give him a great big God bless you. Would y'all help me thank God for my friend tonight? Amen. And my brother, stand up, Pastor Bussey, real quickly. Amen. That's Pastor Frank Bussey. Amen. We honor you, man of God. I love Elder Canfield. I mean, he has a way of just, he gets up, he just flow. Amen. I love it. Amen. Thank God for you tonight. My God, Harvest Music Live is a force to be reckoned with. These people are saved for real. Amen. And I watched Pastor Chris and then certainly Lisa Brunson tonight and, and what come out of them. You know, when God get ready to do something, he don't hit and miss. I hadn't talked to them, I, 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 I hadn't texted them, I hadn't inboxed them. And they got up and right before I come up, they were all in the Kool-Aid of my message. And I know that God is up to something. Now you gotta keep your eyes on me tonight and you gotta hear me because I'm on assignment. Real prophets don't ever show up. I said real prophets don't ever show up unless God is about to do something notable. I said notable. This is not about a quick fix. This is not about a one-time check in the mail to pay a few bills. This is not about some half-baked, watered-down, get-me-by. This tonight is about, this anointing is about getting you out once and forever. That you can be a blessing both spiritually and naturally to everybody that is assigned to you. I hope y'all ready. Now, Elder Canfield, I already understand Pastor Bussey, Pastor Troy, I already understand that I'm not here tonight for everybody. I would to God that I was. But I'm not here tonight for everybody. 
because everybody not ready. Some people in the midst of all of this revival, they have missed it because they thought that it was all about and still think that it's all about just coming to church and feeling something. This thing is more than a feeling. And if you don't quickly, and I, I warn you, if you don't quickly hurry up and get out of your feelings, you're going to miss one of the greatest moves of God that this world has ever known. God is up to something that is so big that you're not going to have room enough to receive it by yourself. That what he will put on you from the anointing to natural tangible blessings, you would be so full of it, so filled with it, that wherever you go, even accidentally, somebody going to get saved. Oh, my God. Accidentally, somebody will get healed. You'll just show up testifying. And you'll be so full of that healing virtue and power of Jesus that while you're testifying, somebody else going to get healed. You're going to be so loaded. You're going to be so blessed. God is a sign that he's ordained it. That you be so blessed that when you show up, you become a deliverance to somebody else. Now, I'm not here for everybody. I wish I was. But the Lord's already given me an assignment. He's given me a word, and I can't worry about who don't get it. My assignment tonight is geared to those that are ready, not only here at the Summerall Tabernacle, in this tabernacle, but those that are watching from wherever you're watching. There's an authentic, unique anointing on me tonight. Because we've been shouting about, and Pastor Chris started talking about, what God promised us for 2018 and how for many of you that are in this room ever since God promised it to you you've seen everything but it I mean all hell have broken loose you're really in a good place when you receive a prophetic word and then all hell break loose it's really implicating or indicating that it really was God that spoke. Because hell is not going to sit on the sideline and let you get that kind of blessing and not try to do everything he can to stop it and to stop you. Oh, I need to tell you, God meant what he said when he said what he said. When God said you were, you were healed, he meant that. When he said you were going to be blessed, the head and not the tail, the lender and not the borrower, when you would have perfect balance in your life, where you wouldn't just have money, but you'd have honey to go along with it. When God said that, he meant that, and he's not going to take it back but hell. Hell is not going to sit down and be idle and let you get that thing without a fight. Hell has to get you and I to get out of alignment so that what was birthed in us can't come to pass. But I got news for the devil tonight. I know we only got a couple of months left, but God wouldn't have said it if he didn't have power to bring it to pass. And I'm not gonna say anything or do anything to abort what God promised because it's already done. So tonight, I gotta, I gotta help you because the Lord has given me this assignment. Uh, and I gotta, I gotta make sure that when I leave tonight, you understand how God is going to do this, how he's going to do it. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I wanna know how he's gonna do it. Now, I want to build tonight on this one statement. There will never be any reception where there's not proper perception. Class, say that with me. Say, they will, there will never be 
any reception void of proper perception. The Bible said Jesus couldn't do many miracles in his own town because of the littleness of their faith. They said, shoot, that ain't nobody but Joseph's son. That's Mary's little boy. When he was the son of God in the flesh, he's the living word. He is the bread of life, the bomb in Gilead. Health and strength to your bones. The Bible says that for as much as Jesus wanted to help people, he couldn't help everybody. Preachers are going to live better and longer when they understand you're not going to be able to help everybody. But you are assigned to somebody. I gave it up a long time ago. I have great hopes and aspirations and great dreams for everybody. But I know that until people come in alignment with the principles of God's word, that it doesn't matter what I hope for them. They got to get it for themselves. You had to get saved for yourself. Come on, somebody. You, you, you can't go to heaven off of, of what I got. You got to have your own. Uh, re reach over, tap somebody, tell you got to have your own relationship. And having your own relationship don't mean you went out and got some false doctrine from somewhere and you built your life around something false. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about, you got to have the kind of relationship that this word says you got to have. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. You can't go to heaven anyhow. You have to go the biblical way. You, you can't just, what I'm trying to say is you can't just confess. You got to convert. I got to move, but I'm scratching my head wondering what really is salvation in the 21st century because people confess that they're saved. They confess that they love God, but I haven't seen what they've been saved from. When I got saved, I got saved from some stuff, some stuff I couldn't go back to, some stuff that, would, that God hated, some stuff that would cut my life off, some stuff that would keep me from getting everything God promised me. I got saved from something. Nowadays, people feel like they can still live any kind of way and they're still going to heaven. You're going to hell and you're going quick if you don't convert. When you confess the Lord Jesus, you got to find out what he loves and love it. Find out what he hates and hate it. So, so, you can't receive from God from Jesus until you understand how he operates. I mean, we are mature saints. We've been in church a long time and we've been in God a long time. Long enough to understand that we're going to have to do it God's way. God's not going to come down to our little thoughts and our little ways and move for us on our way. We're going to have to come up to his way. Thank you for that, Pastor Lydia Jones. I said, we're going to have to come up to God's way. He's not coming down to, to and change his laws and his holiness and his righteousness and his healing plan and his blessing plan for us. No, your tears don't move God. What moves God is your obedience to his word. I know you want a prophecy, and I got one for you, but let me balance the prophecy with a principle. I didn't get much help right there. I said, let me balance the prophecy with a principle. You want a rhema word, you want a, a Lord, you want a ruach, come on somebody. But there's also a logos. And you must have both. A rhema word, an inspired word must be judged by the logos. So we got to find out how to receive the person that God sends us so that we can walk in everything that the person that God sends us speaks over our life. Listen, y'all, I want everything God has for me. I don't need another prophecy, really. I'm talking about me. I just need that stuff that I've already been prophesied to come to pass. 
grab somebody by the hand and tell them, I just need that stuff to come to pass. You talk about winning a lottery. That would be a, that would be a mighty, mighty payday. You need to be upset. Lord, somebody won the lottery. I didn't win it. Well, listen, come on now. You are a child of God. You are a lottery winner. When you gave your life to Christ, you struck it rich. Come on, y'all talk to me in it. Because there's more to God than just, you know, going to heaven. He wants you to have a little bit of heaven right here on earth. But you got to know the principle. Everybody say principle. There'll never be any reception where there's not proper perception. If you look at Ephesians 4, God tells us clearly how he wants to bless us. And he says in Ephesians 4 and 10, he says, to some I've given to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. Verse number 11 of Ephesians 4 says, tells us why he gave them. He gives them to you, watch this, as gifts. He gives them to you to perfect you. Which means you don't know it all, you don't have it all. I think I got about 20 hand claps out of about 1,000, 1,500, maybe 2,000 people. Amen. Listen, you, you don't know it all. Tell somebody you don't know it all. That's why God gave you a pastor. Jeremiah 3.15, God says, I'll give you pastors after my own heart that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Have you ever asked yourself, why do I need knowledge and understanding? You need knowledge and understanding because before God put you in this earth, he gave you destiny and purpose. You're carrying that. And since God gave you that destiny and purpose, he has to give you somebody that is anointed, somebody that is gifted, somebody that really knows him, praise God, to be able to speak into your life it feeds you with knowledge and understanding unto the fulfillment of what you're carrying. Let me go ahead and just tell you straight up. You're not going to give birth to what God promised you by yourself. You don't even know how to nurture it. Even in the natural. A woman has prenatal care. She doesn't have to go through that by herself. She goes to get that checkup. And the closer it gets to time for her to have the baby, the more checkups she has. What y'all think all this revival is about? You're so close to giving birth to something. Oh, God Almighty. And if you can get out of you what you've been carrying, if you can get it out of you, it'll turn around and carry you. Mary, did you know, for the sake of the coming season, Mary, did you know that your baby boy, the child that you will soon deliver, he's going to turn right around and deliver you? Some of you are carrying some stuff that's so big that if you could just get it out of you. And that's why you're frustrated, but God said, I can't let it come out even though you're past term. Even though you're past due. Even though... It's time for you to give birth. I can't let it come out yet without you understanding this one serious piece of the puzzle. And it is once you give birth to it, don't let it change you. Oh, your lifestyle going to change. Where you shop at probably going to change. What you eat may change. But don't, don't allow the spirit of you the heart of you to change. Because you know, some folk, they'll get blessed and then they want to get quiet. They get blessed and they say, well, you know what? I ran the aisles. I spun around three times. I've sown seeds. And now God had brought to pass what he said he was going to do in my life. Let me go over here to the calm church now and just sit down. That's exactly why he can't bless you. Because you will take your happy hip somewhere else when you know you're supposed to be right here. If this place was good enough to birth in you and out of you and through you, the promise of God, once it come to pass, you need to lock in right here. You need to bloom where you are planted. Stick and stay. If the breakthrough ministry of Pastor Rod Parsley, if the, if the World Harvest Church was great enough to stay up at night and pray and fast, and these leaders putting your name on the altar and calling your name out, and God give you that significant thing you've been praying for, when God bless you, don't let the devil run you out of here. 
You meet some of the most humble people when they're broke. But if you ever let them get two nickels and a dime to rub together, they'll never be in the reception where there's not proper perception. God wants to do it for you, but you got to understand how he's going to do it. He's already done it in and through somebody that he's going to assign you to, praise God, namely your pastor and those other voices that he authorized. Now, I said a lot, but I ain't got time to deal with that. You just going to have to understand that your pastor know what he's doing whenever he's giving credentials and whenever he's putting people up here. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's already sought God. God have already given him instruction. He can't be everywhere. He can't go everywhere. You got to receive those that he receives. That didn't go over well at all. Because somebody said, Pastor Parsley can't come. Then you get all bent out of shape. You get all upset because Pastor Parsley can't come. Don't you understand when Pastor Parsley lays hands on somebody, praise God, and sends them forth, when that person shows up, it's just like he's there? Yeah. With the cloud of God's glory and the momentum of that glory cloud, that's going to catapult Pastor Parsley around the world physically. We can't be bent out of shape, sitting around making up our mind when or when or when or when we are not going to come to church. That didn't go over well at all. I'm trying to help somebody, but that didn't go over well. I understand I want my pastor. I want to see my pastor. But you got to understand that your pastor is not just called to the Harv and the Summerall Tabernacle. He's called to apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and leaders around the world. He's a general in the body of Christ. The world is calling. Woo, it's tight, but we're going to get there. Watch this. This man that God has such an anointing on his life, I have never seen nothing living like Pastor Parsley. I'm talking about as well-rounded, and that's with regard to all of my friends. I have many friends in the gospel. I have many great men and women of God. They are, watch this, specialists in their field. It's rare that you find a man of God that has an anointing on his life that he becomes a specialist nearly in every field. I, mean, I ain't never seen nothing like this, man. I've never seen an anointing like this. I mean, he shows up, and, 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 and you don't know whether he's coming as an apostle or whether he's coming as a prophet or whether he's coming as an evangelist or whether he's coming to be the pastor or whether he's going to stand out here and teach. You just don't know. But when he opens his mouth to declare the things of God, Something happens that hell can't stop. Something happens that demons can't prevent. When he opens his mouth, the elements shift. And things come in alignment for our deliverance. So the Lord gave me this word. He said, son, I want you to go tonight. I want you to show them out the word of God how I'm going to do it. And so he took me to 2 Kings 4. And I want us to look at this tonight very quickly. I'm almost there. 2 Kings chapter 4. And I'm here tonight, and I'm like Pastor Parsley. He's the apostolic version. I'm the prophetic version. I don't try to be the apostle, because I'm not. I'm happy in my own skin. I'm prophetic 100%. You can wake me up in the middle of the night with slob on the pillar and sleep in my eye. And I can tell you how to get a breakthrough. I can tell you how to get a miracle. Because that's my anointing. That's my office. I ain't got to be deep. I ain't got to be spooky. Don't have to be swinging off chandeliers. Because it's my office. I have to stay in my office. Everybody say, tell your neighbor real quick. Say, just stay in your office. But yeah, tell them, stay in your Tell them again. Say, stay in your office. If you're an apostle, be an apostle. If you're a prophet, be a prophet. Don't try to be an evangelist. Come on, if you're an evangelist, don't try to be a pastor. Just be an evangelist and be happy. Come on, y'all talk to me. 
The biggest problem we have in the body of Christ right now relative to leadership is we got a bunch of people out here that's doing stuff that have no idea of their identity. They schizophrenic and bipolar spiritually. Come on here. I don't want somebody that's just gifted and somebody that's just anointed. I want somebody to know who they are in God. And they live it. Your character is bigger than your gift. Lord have mercy. Your character in God's eye is bigger than your anointing. The church is placing too much emphasis on gifting and anointing and not character and integrity. I don't need somebody that just got a gift. I need to know that you're living right. Don't be laying your nasty hands on me. I was on Facebook today and I looked and there's a, a, a pastor on there talking about the haters that they have. I said, when will these people ever grow up? What you gonna look like? You're supposed to be leading people, but every time you post up, you're talking about your haters. Please grow up and stop talking about your haters. Everybody got haters. Come on, oh Lord. I said everybody got haters. You are a leader in the body of Christ. Stop acting like a baby. Come on, I mean, when you start, when you start elevating in God, and when God, you know, when you say God made you a bishop. When you say God made you an apostle, when you say God made you a prophet, you ought to have some strength about you. Lord, I just heard something, but I got to hurry. You got to have some strength about you that when people that are lesser ranking than you in the kingdom say anything, or people that's not even in the kingdom say anything, it don't shake you. I don't respond to my critics. I don't respond to my haters. Just about tell me nobody got time for that. I feel the anointing on this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. God says, I want to bless you. Let me close. I want to bless you. This is how I'm going to do it. I've assigned you to an anointing that can handle anything that's on your life. Rodney L. Parsley has an anointing on his life that God have connected all of us to that whatever we are facing can be dealt with so that we can walk perfectly in our creation role, in our calling, and be as creative as we want to be, watch this, so that we can leave an inheritance and a legacy in the earth through our children and grandchildren. It's on our leader. I want you to understand this because God would never send you to this church and to join this church if the man of God wasn't equipped to be able to feed you with knowledge and understanding so that your dream could come to pass. Now let's settle that. You only have one pastor. Lord have mercy. I need to be here on a Sunday morning to say that. You only have one pastor. You cannot come here and call Pastor Parsley your pastor and then you go across town and you got a pastor over there too. You don't need a pastor for this and then a pastor for that and then a pastor for that. This man of God is equipped to get you whatever you need. Who do men say that I the son of man am? And some say Jeremiah is Elias, Isaiah, so one of the other prophets. But who do you say, my inner circle, say that I am? Thou art the Christ. Well, Peter, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, but my father revealed that to you. And I say unto you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What church cannot the gates of hell prevail against? The church that knows that Jesus is the Son of God. Are y'all hearing me in here? In other words, the church that has the revelation of who God is, of who Jesus is. The church that has the revelation of even who their pastor is is going to do exploits. But if you don't recognize who your leader is and what's on your leader, you're going to live beneath your privilege. Wow. 
you need to ask God for a revelation of who your leader is. Because some of you know him, you think, but you don't know him like you think you do. Young lady came off and said, I'm ready to get married. I said, put up, don't, don't worry about it. You, you're not ready. Don't, 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 don't do that. Don't, don't, don't get married. You don't need to do that because it haven't been revealed to you yet by God what a wife looked like. You need God to explain to you, and he does it through men and women of God, your pastor ex ex expressly, and then other voices that he authorized. They will explain to you and explain to me, come on, what's on this man of God so that we can place a demand on the anointing on his life. Why? Because there will never be any reception where there's not proper perception. Until you understand, perceive who Rodney Parsley is, you're not going to be able to uh, 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 make a demand fully and totally on the anointing that's on his life. It's amazing to me. He can go off to places like Virginia Beach and preach one service, 45 minutes to one hour, perhaps two hours, sometimes three hours. He can go there and preach and everybody get healed, everybody get saved, everybody get delivered, and then come back to his own church. And there's some of us that sit up in here like we really know him and we really don't know him. We are dying with a healing bomb on the platform. For. We're dying in the room where there's healing. Because you don't let a spirit tell you that you know who he is. And unless God revealed to you who he is, you don't know. <laughs> let me show it to you in the Bible. Second Kings chapter number uh, four. Look at verse number one. Let me show it to you in scripture. And I'm finished. It says, now there cried a certain woman of the wise of the sons of the prophets unto Elijah saying, thy servant, my husband is dead. Now watch this. Here, this woman's in trouble. And thou knowest that, my, that, that, that thy servant did fear the Lord. And now the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. Come on, let's look at this. And Elijah said unto her, who said unto her? And Elijah said unto her, watch this, what shall I do for thee? Now this woman was in trouble. Her husband died, who was one of the sons of Elijah, one of the sons of the prophet. When, as long as he was alive, whenever he needed a miracle, he, he saw how Elisha maneuvered in the spirit and how Elisha uh, 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 functioned as a senior prophet. And so whenever he had a need, he just did what he saw. But he died and left his family in a situation that David said none of us should be because David said the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. This woman and her kids were in want. And she's crying now unto Elijah. Please touch somebody real quick and tell them it's all right to cry. Just know who to cry to. She's crying unto Elijah. And Elijah said unto her, woman, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Notice Elijah did not say, what do you want God to do? See, when you are anointed, you don't have to go on a 40-day fast for every, for every instruction for the people. When you are anointed, you don't have to just say, stay right here, let me go pray about it. When you know who you are, you can say what Elijah said, what shall I do for you? Come on, y'all say amen to that. I said, say amen to that. Until you get a revelation of who Rod Parsley is, you're not going to be able to cry unto him. You're going to cry unto your friends. You're going to cry unto your family members. That cannot help you if you'll bring those tears to the altar. I said, bring them to the altar. I said, if you'll bring them to the altar. If you'll come to church, you got to come to church to bring them to the altar. If you'll come to your church. Because he's our Elijah. I heard two yes sirs, one yes, and I think I heard a right over there somewhere. I said he is our Elisha. He stands on the platform and says, what do you want me to do? He says, tell me what you have in your house. 
He didn't say tell God. He said tell me. See, you've been trying to get to God this way when your miracle is this way. I told you I didn't come for everybody because everybody ain't ready for this. But I came for somebody. And somebody going to get this. And we're going to turn Columbus and this region upside down. Can I tell you, God told me, and this is for every one of you that can receive it. Y'all ready for some prophetic word? Come on. God spoke to me and said, son, they don't know me like they think they do. They haven't seen their best days yet. They haven't seen their best miracles and their best breakthroughs yet. I'm about to put something on them that is going to take them about a year or two to figure out who they are all over again. I got a blessing that's so big that it's going to take you time to discover yourself again. Grab somebody and tell them, that's my prophecy. You ain't seen blessings yet. I mean, you're doing all right. And you're doing all right. Some of you making six, seven figures, you're doing all right. But God says, I ain't finished with you yet. And it ain't even about the money. What it's really about is the assignment that your leader has. And that God is trying to get something through you to your leader. Some of you, you got enough millions. You're already blessed. Come on here. But God is saying, I want to raise you up now to make you a kingdom investor, to make you a kingdom philanthropist. I want to raise you up now because there are souls at stake and I need somebody. That's why some folk couldn't hit the lottery because you get the lottery, you'd have left the church. Come on, y'all talk to me in here. You know you got a ticket. Loose me and let me go. Don't tighten up on me now. The devil is a lie. Come on, say amen. Now, had I bought a ticket, had I bought one, I didn't this time, praise God. Had I got a ticket and won, I'd have been up in here tonight. Matter of fact, I'd have left an offering. I'd have got on that chartered jet. Come on, somebody. And I went right on the Virginia beach and I found Pastor Parsons. I just got to put this in your hand. This is for you and this is for the church. This is for you and this is for the kingdom. God wanted to get something to you, but he had to get it through me to you. Are y'all ready for that kind of testimony? I'm not here for everybody, but I'm here for somebody. God uses people. I said God uses people. Elijah said unto her, tell me what you have in your house. She said, I don't have anything in the house but a pot of oil. I can hear her saying, what you got left is all you need. Grab somebody real quickly. I can't, ain't got time to really deal with this tonight. But grab somebody and tell them, I know you've been through some stuff. <laughs> tell them, but what you have left is all that you need. Ah, Lord, have mercy. I wish I had time to work it. I wish I had time to put some weight on it. I wish I had time to elaborate. I wish I had time. Lord, have mercy. Oh, my God, tell somebody what you got left is all you need. See, when you look at what you lost, it makes you sad. That's why the devil always wants you to be looking at what you lost. But when you look at that and realize you do have something left, it'll make you glad. God will never let the devil take everything from you. Are you hearing me in here? I said God will never let the devil take everything. Because God understands his own law. And he says while the earth remains, there's going to be seed time and harvest. He's going to... If it's not enough for harvest, it's got to be seed. That's for somebody tonight. Stop letting the devil make you upset and grieve and be filled with self-pity because of what you lost. You ought to be glad you lost him. It's better to lose him on this side of the marriage vow than to lose him, uh, y'all better hear me, after you get married and you find out that he's really Okay, let me hurry up. Praise God. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, shout because you got something left. Yeah. 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 Woo. 
my God, hallelujah. I feel God using what we got left. I said, I feel God using what we got left. I said, I feel him using what we got left. You got more than enough left. He says, go borrow. Next verse. Then he said, <laughs> I love it. Go borrow of all your neighbors' vessels. He said, don't get a little bit, borrow not a few. He said, get a whole lot of empty vessels. Next verse. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon you and your sons. Sometimes when you believe in God for a miracle, you got to put everybody out but those that's closest. Sometimes you can't even tell, sister girl. You can't even tell. Come on, your ace boon coon. Sometimes you just got to close the door and just wait on God to do something with what you got left. He says, shut the door upon thee and thy sons and pour out into all those vessels and set aside that which is full. Touch your mind, tell them there's a miracle about to happen. <laughs> tell your neighbor, there's a breaking in my favor. Say it again, there's a breaking in my favor. How many of y'all believe that something is happening? Hey. And she poured out. Next verse. Look at this. Only got two more verses. Watch this. Look at this. And it came to pass. We can go home right there. I said we can go home right there. Why, why can we go home? Because it came to pass. I can hear that being your testimony. Somebody, oh Shakataba, somebody about this time tomorrow is going to have the testimony that it came to pass. Grab somebody and shake them and say, neighbor, you're about to have the testimony that it came to pass. And it came to pass that when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there's not a vessel more. And the oil, one version says, stop multiplying. Next verse, watch this. Then she came, this is where I've been trying to get to the whole night. I'm done. Then she came and told Pastor Parsley, who gave her the instruction anyway of the miracle that happened in her favor. Then she came and told the man of God, watch this, and he said, take your seat, I'm there, we're going, watch this. And he said, now, this lady, she was smart. I know she was smart because she obeyed the man of God. You don't need a doctor degree to obey. Matter of fact, some of your academia is the reason you're in the position you're in now. Because you put more weight and more faith in your degree than you do in your man of God. Some of us are just too smart. Look at your neighbor asking, you're not too smart, are you? No, go ahead and ask them. Say, you're not too smart, are you? Ask them, are you? Because anytime God says, stand up and turn around and sit back down, I'm turning something for you. And you sit there. Tell me, I don't see how me getting up, turn around, sit back down, and saying that is going to change anything. You just allowed your academia to have more clout, more weight in your life than you do the supernatural. You just forfeited a miracle, and God knows, only God knows when that kind of anointing is coming back. What if I told you to stand up and turn around and sit back down and shout, things are turning for me right now, that if within the next seven days, that's something that was so pressing your life, God's turning that thing around for you, what would you do? It's turning, it's turning, it's turning, it's turning. I said it's turning. Somebody's relationship is turning. Somebody's health is turning. Somebody's business is turning. Somebody's family is turning. Somebody's money is turning. Shout with me in here tonight.
Watch this. Take a seat. I'm there. I'm there. Watch this. I ain't got no more time on the board. Better stay with the prophet. Watch this. She came and told the man of God, and he said, take your pencil, take your pen, and you write these three things down. Because this is the word that God gave me and told me to declare it and to decree it over World Harvest Church, City Harvest Network, partners of this ministry, everybody that's connected to Pastor Rod Parsley and the anointing that's on his life. God told me three things are getting ready to happen. Look at what happened here in the, in the Word of God. Because I told you, if it's a breathed Word, if, it's, if it is an inspired Word, if the Holy Spirit spoke, if it's breath, if it's Ruach, if it is Rhema, then it has to be balanced by the Logos. And here's what God said to me. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt. Number one. God said, this miracle that's getting ready to hit your life is going to make you debt free. Yeah. Touch somebody and tell them I'm about to be debt free. Yeah. This ain't for everybody because everybody ain't going to receive it. This ain't for everybody because some of y'all love being in debt. You love robbing Peter to pay Paul. You love living beneath your privilege. But there's some of us in here tonight that understand that God's best for us is that we owe nobody nothing but to love them. Grab somebody and tell them I'm about to be dead free. So I said, but now wait a minute, man of God. Wait a minute. Now I know you're in the word. I see it. I know, I know that you, you, you're moving now in the prophetic. I, I feel that. But can you give me just one more reason to believe you? You're so sad. But I'm going to give you one more reason to believe that, number one, God says he's about to make you debt free. Here it is. Here's the reason. Because I'm debt free. And I owe no man nothing but to love him. I obeyed a command from a man of God. He laid hands on me Mike Murdoch, and in five months after he laid his hands on me, I was completely debt free. That was 2009. I'm still debt free today with 11 kids. I ain't here for everybody on the Canfield. I wish I was. I'm not. I'm not in Elkhart tonight for everybody. I wish I was. I'm not around the world tonight speaking for everybody or to everybody. I wish I was because what's on me right now is getting ready to get on somebody in here and somebody there, and you're going to owe no man nothing but the love of me. And the Lord also said, and as a perk, he's going to give you balance in your life. It won't just be you got money and you got to worry about a woman or worry about a man or worry about your legacy, but God says, I'm going to bring all things in balance. You're not going to have money and then have a drug problem and an alcohol problem. You're not going to have money and the devil torment in your mind. You're not going to have money. Praise God and don't know what to do with it. You're going to have balance. Everybody shout money and balance. Oh, you better say it. Shout it again. Money and balance. You're going to have money. Money's not going to have you. God said, I'll make you a millionaire if you won't let the money control you. Some folk would give anything God said before they got rich. Now they're rich. They won't give nothing. You tip God like he's a butler. You better recognize. Tell somebody say you better recognize. What happened? God breathed on you and made you wealthy. But if you're not careful, he can blow on you and it's gone. Then you're going to need some psychological help. Don't play with souls. Some of you are, God has blessed you tremendously. And you're supposed to sow like he's blessed you. But you don't let the devil tell you, look at what they give it. And you've limited your giving based on how they give. 
It's once appointed for man to die. After death, the judgment, you're going to have to give an account to God for the souls you let slip into hell because you were watching somebody else and you wouldn't support ministry. And now because you didn't support ministry, we couldn't do what God have called us to do. And because we couldn't go where God told us to go and do what he told us to do, you were supposed to fund it. And because you didn't stand up and do what you were supposed to do, souls were lost. You're going to have to give an account just like the abortionists. Everything that God gives you is not, is not for you. He's trying to trust you with souls. If you're not tithing off of a thousand, you're not going to tithe off of a million. Let me get back to this because I got two things. Okay, he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt. There it is right there. She was in debt. She got the miracle at the mouth of a man to God. She comes right back to him when she got the miracle. She didn't go to Hawaii. She said, if Elijah was good enough for me when I was in the struggle and I went crying to him and now that I got the miracle at his word, my respect level won't let me go to Hawaii yet. I got to go back and find the man of God to find out is there any further instructions now that I got the miracle. And he said to her, pay your debt first. Don't go to Neiman Marcus. Don't go to Nordstrom's. Don't go get it. No more debt. Pay what you owe first. We don't need to be shouting and speaking in tongues, talking about how God bless us, and we got people that we owe sitting up in the church with us, and we act like they're not there. That's a demon. Pay your debt. Number one, I'm going to be debt free. Tell somebody, you might as well get happy with me. I'm about to be debt free. Go ahead, shake them a little bit. Wake them up. Tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. Tell them, say, you might as well get with me, because I'm about to be debt free. I holler when I feel the unction. I do it all the time. When I feel the unction, when I feel God breaking something for people, I can't help it. I felt something breaking here tonight. Grab somebody and say, hey! hey! Elkhart, somebody shout, hey! Somebody in your bedroom shout, hey! Well, something's breaking. Number two, here it is. He said, go sell the oil and pay your debt. Watch this. And live thou. <laughs> Number two, God says, you're getting ready to be established. And live thou. That means you used to borrow. But now that you're out of debt, before you help anybody else, let charity begin at home. You get established. Come on, body of Christ. You can't go be buying nobody else no shoes and their kids' shoes and your kids need shoes. You're out of debt now. Lavish the blessing on your children. Your children's children. Charity begins at home and then spreads abroad. Come on, y'all. Don't go bless no other church and you ain't blessed your own church yet. It begins at home. I was receiving an offering one time, and God knows I need it, but God was checking my character, my integrity. And here's a woman of God about to give like twenty, thirty thousand dollars in the service, and the Lord spoke to me and said, "Ask her when has she blessed her home church." I said, "Sweetheart, when's the last time you blessed your church like this?" She says, "I haven't." God said, "Give her the check back." I said, "That's the devil, Satan." The Lord rebuke you. Gave her the check back. I said, you ought to bless your own church first. Go bless your own pastor. And then if God's still speaking to you, write me a check because we need help too. Since then, God has given me millions of dollars. He, he's blessed me because he understood from that one thing. And he let me understand that money wouldn't move me. Come on, y'all say amen. Oh, no, I've been broke a long time. I know what it is to live at the bottom, but I also know what it is to live real good. Come on, y'all talk to me. And God spoke to me. He said, I'll give you anything you want. He said, but if I ask for it back, can you give it back to me? He 
He says, get established. Get your own house. Get your own car. Bless your own self. Come on, y'all say amen. amen. I got to tell y'all this because just as sure as you're sitting up in here, the heavens have already shook and released your blessing. Oh, my God. You just need instructions on what to do with it now. He says, and live thou. Now, here's where everybody's going to get upset with you. Because people now, after you, you know, after you paid your debt, which includes your tithe and your offering, of course. We, we, we read between the lines. We understand that. But now that you've paid your debt, God is saying get established. Charity begins at home. So now people are going to see you accumulating, and they're going to be trying to ask you to hook them up. And you're going to need an anointing called no. <laughs> Grab your neighbor by the hand and tell them there is an anointing called no. You got to be careful when you get blessed. I mean, can you really stand it? Because there's some folk, praise God, that won't tithe, won't give no offering, don't praise, don't make no kind of declaration, no kind of proclamation over their life. They don't have no kind of dedicated life. They don't pray in the morning. They don't talk to God through the day. But they know the word is true. They just won't do it. They'll sit around and watch us do what we got to do. They'll watch us suffer because we did what we did. And then they'll wait on us to get blessed. And then they try to connect themselves with us. Look at your neighbor and say, the devil is a Liar. Tell him I just received a new anointing. And that anointing wasn't for a car. I got that. It wasn't for a house. I got that. It was that anointing to say no. Let's try it. Okay. That's good. It's some real religious folks sitting up right now. Some real religious folk. And they're saying, I thought I was supposed to bless everybody. No. Whew. Please. <laughs> You're not Jesus Jr. <laughs> you can't bless everybody. Stop letting people play on your, self, your sanctified nerve, your salvation nerve, telling you, talking about, you're supposed to help me. Ain't you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. And the answer is still no. The question is, and the answer is, no, 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 no. no. Get established. Touch somebody tell me, I'm going to be debt free. Yeah. Say, I'm going to be established. Yeah. That means I ain't going to have to sit at the bus stop no more. That means I'm not going to have to borrow your tie to match my suit. That means you're not going to have to borrow her pocketbook to match your dress. Come on, y'all talk to me in here. That means you're not going to have to see something you want today and have to tell them to hold it to Friday. The devil's a lie. You get ready to get established. Some of your closet going to be the size of that stage. Touch them and say, get established. I'm going to be debt free, Elder Canfield. I'm going to get established. Look what he says. And live thou, sell the oil, pay your debt, and live thou, get established, watch this, and thy children of the rest. Number three, God says, I'm going to make you debt free. I'm going to cause you to be established. And I'm going to cause you to be a true blessing to those assigned to you. Say it with me. Say, I'm about to be a true blessing to those assigned to me. Say it with strength. Say, I'm about to be a true blessing. Only to those assigned to me. So what's going to happen? I'm going to be debt free. I'm going to get established in this go around. And I'm going to be a true blessing only to those assigned to me. That's the word of the Lord over this house, over City Harvest Network, over the, oh, come on, over the partnership. That's the word of the Lord. I'm about to be established. I'm about to be debt free. I am about to be a true blessing only to those assigned to me. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, get ready, get ready, get ready. Now, here's what a true blessing is. I'm done. A true blessing is if there's someone you assign to and they come to you with a need and they need is $500. A true blessing is not to give them $500. That's a blessing. 
But a true blessing is when you can give them like 2000 and tell them, say, I know you need the $500 for your light bill. Just take the whole 2000 to the power company. And your next bills, let them deduct while you're saving money, accumulating money for the next bill. You know what you've done when you give them, when you bless them like that? What you've done, you have secured that they will never have to go through that ever, ever, ever again in their life. That's a true blessing. Touch your mind and tell them, get ready to be a true blessing to those assigned to you. What you gonna do when you don't owe nobody nothing? When you owe nobody nothing, and the money keep coming. You can go where you want, when you want, stay as long as you want, take who you want. What you gonna do then? What you gonna do when your whole life is so balanced that everywhere you go, you properly represent the kingdom? Where there's nothing lacking, nothing broken, nothing missing in your life. Where again, you have the money and the honey. Where you have money and your mind is right. I was sitting in the restaurant today, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, I want you to bless the waitress. I said, what you want me to give her? He said, give her $500. I said, are you sure that's all you want me to give her? Because she just told me, she just told me that she had a daughter, and she, she's struggling, you know, she's married, she got a daughter, she's struggling a little bit, you know, and I said, is that all you want me to give her? He said, well, give her 1000 So, I, I, I wrote on the back of the receipt, on the back of the check, God loves you, and Jesus Christ wants you to have a great life. And I put it up under the receipt, and I walked out. I didn't make no big deal about it, because it ain't about me. If I tell her who I am, then she gonna wanna thank me. I don't need that. If I tell her Jesus Christ loves her, it's going to make an imprint in her spirit. Yeah. Problem with us, we don't know how to bless folk. We can't bless them and just keep moving. Because we want the glory. If you get the glory, if, they, if you let them know who you are and you get the glory, and, but there are times when God will tell you to let people know who you are, but if, if, if you get, get what I'm saying, if you let people know who you are, then you've gotten your reward when they pat you on the back. But if you let God reward you. I told God, I said, God, listen, I just want to be clear on what you want me to give her. I said, but you know I'm kind of edgy right now because there's something that I know I'm supposed to be doing with this money, and you're telling me to sow it. I said, is that all? <laughs> Come on, y'all talk to me. Because I don't want to miss you. But I don't want to miss this too long either. Y'all say, man, you ever been there when you know God wants you to give and you got just a certain amount and you want to make sure you're hearing God and that you're doing all God tell you to do, but at the same time, you need, a, you need that miracle back in a hurry. I want you to hear me and I'm done. In the stillness of this moment, you can play soft, but I'm done. Listen. The anointing that's on my life is to get people out of debt, to move them into the supernatural. We've seen it here. We've seen all. We've seen it. We get the testimonies, how people have gotten blessed because they've moved under the anointing when I was preaching and ministering. The Lord told me tonight, he said, son, I want you to come. I don't want you to shout them and take them way out there. He said, I want them to understand tonight that I use people, that I put my anointing. I got up talking about this. I put my anointing on apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers. I put my anointing in flesh to perfect people. He said, teach it out. And then on the end, tell them what your anointing is. You know my anointing. My anointing is to challenge people to sow into the kingdom. My, my assignment is to lead people in the harvest. That's my anointing. 
We see people saved. We see people healed. We, the prophetic word, the word of knowledge is so strong in my life. But that ain't really my anointing. My anointing is to bring people to a knowledge and an awareness that they don't have to be in debt. That one principle can change their life forever. When I hold Shetamaya, I feel my anointing rising. One principle can shift their life forever. Notice tonight as I preached and ministered to you, the Holy Spirit kept bringing us back to this one key word in this balance. This balance. Last two days I've been praying very strong and the Lord said to me, he said, son, I'm trying to bring the church in alignment. I'm trying to bring them into a place where they understand. I want them blessed, but I don't want them to get blessed and start being spooky. Because I've not only called World Harvest Church, listen to me very carefully, I'm done. I've not only called the World Harvest Church to the down and out. I've called World Harvest Church to the up and out. You can be spooky with people that's down and out, and they'll receive you because they're really looking for a way out. They're looking for a miracle. But when you're dealing with intellectual people, when you're dealing with people that are up and out, you got to come with a principle because they understand logistics. They understand, they understand A, B, C. They understand one, two, three. They understand line upon line, precept upon precept. And the Lord spoke to me very clearly and said, son, don't miss this because my people are at stake. Of course, conversation, prayer is a two-way street. So when God finished talking to me, I said this to God. I said, God, sir, I said, so how do you want me to do it? What do you want me to say? He said, son, tell them that I snuck you in on a Wednesday night. I normally, for churches the size of this church and church the magnitude of this church, don't come on Wednesday nights. I come on Sundays because I want maximum effect and maximum impact. So the masses are there on Sunday and you're able to speak a word and release an anointing. You get maximum impact, maximum effect. But the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm sending you to World Harvest Church on a Wednesday night because I want to deal with the faithful few. I thought y'all would be happy that God would send an authentic prophet on a Wednesday night. He said, son, tell them as, the, as sure as I sit on the throne and I reign. Tell them that I'm sneaking in a miracle. I'm sending something that they would say don't make no sense. I'm sending something that would seemingly be so off schedule. He said, but tell them they got to trust me. 